الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ و سلم علی نبی محمد و علی آلہ و صحبہ و سلم مبعد ایو الحبہ the attribute of anger is an attribute that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instilled in us and sometimes anger or those attributes related to anger can be something favorable but generally anger is a negative characteristic and the Prophet وسلم, advised us not to become angry that when something happens to us uh, that we don't react immediately with anger and that's why the Prophet وسلم, said La تغضب. he said do not become angry and he repeated that three times showing us the importance of avoiding that when something happens to us that we should not become angry but that doesn't mean that this human attribute is always negative and always out of place there is a time and place when anger but it's definitely we should always have control of our anger we should always strive to have control of our anger Ibn al, Ibn al Qayyum al Jawziyya rahimahullah ta'ala he said every character has its limits and boundaries and whenever they exceed these limits and boundaries they become injurious injurious and oppressive so they cause injury and they become oppressive and whenever they fall short of these limits and boundaries they become a mark of deficiency and degradation and then he mentioned the first characteristic ayu al habba al ghadab anger and he says anger has its limitation which is commendable courage and self respect that fortifies one from the acts of indecency and degradation which tarnish your honor and integrity so this is kind of this is the type of anger that is uh that is a, a preferable type of anger meaning that you are angry about people going against uh transgressing the limits set by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for example you see someone you drink drinking alcohol using drugs committing fornication whatever the case is and for the sake of Allah you detest that action because you know that it's prohibited from the Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is the type of anger that is commendable this is a commendable type of anger and this is within the limits and this is establishing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen so it's commendable and it has courage and it pr uh, preserves a person's self-respect and dignity this limit is the perfection of this quality and this is the limit that we just mentioned within the bounds of the sharia however when anger exceeds its limit it causes its perpetrator to transgress the necessary boundary and if it falls short <clears throat> of this limit it is considered cowardice and one not cause its perpetrator to despise indecency so ibn al-qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala what he's mentioning here he said that when anger exceeds this limit so then when you're angry over worldly affairs or you're angry uh where it causes you to be extreme or act hastily or 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 harm others or be oppressive that means it's exceeded its limit and it causes the perpetrator to transgress the necessary boundary so there's boundaries that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set but the person who becomes angry and acts based upon solely on their emotions then they tend to transgress that boundary and the opposite the extreme opposite of this characteristic is when a person is a so uh so lighthearted so careless with regards to the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
that they fall short of what what is necessary to be angered about. And this is considered cowardice and will not cause its perpetrator to despise indecency. And that's a beautiful observation by Shaykh al-Islam ibn al-Qayyum uh, ta'ala because when we uh, try to ap apply that, for example, this is the case in which an individual may witness uh, uh, people in their presence drinking alcohol, for example, especially if it is other Muslims who have no excuse. They know that it's prohibited. But then they're flouting or flaunting their transgression against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his bounds. So they're drinking alcohol or doing whatever they do. Out, they're, they're being uh, publicly exposing their sinfulness. Their ma'asi, yajhar bi ma'asiyah. They are openly advertising their sinfulness. So in this case, ayyula ahabba, when we have individuals openly sinning like this with no shame, and the person who witnesses this as a, as a believer, if they have no shame as well, as if they partake in it and, and enjoy it, or at least they have no anger about the transgressions of Allah, uh, the, tra the, the, about transgressing the bounds of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they feel nothing in their heart, then this is a sign of a, a type of sickness and where they have uh, belittled this characteristic of, of anger and not given it its right. They haven't given Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commandments its their due right by observing them and by actually loving for the sake of Allah and detesting sinfulness and wickedness and disbelief for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a sign of cowardice as, as uh, uh, Ibn al-Qayyum mentions that this is cowardice because they have not stepped up to the plate of detesting indecency. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to practice this and bless us to fear Him and bless us to avoid indecency and, and detest it because that's a sign of Iman. When our Iman is weak, we may partake in indecency or we may enjoy it, in fact. And especially if you enjoy it outwardly where you don't even cover your own sins and you enjoy and partake in sinfulness, then this is a, 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 a grievous state. And a grievous crime uh, 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 means a person has reached a state in their sinfulness which is, is, leaves, them on the, uh, leaves them in a sense of danger. And this is why Shaykh al-Islam uh, Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, Al-Ma'asi barid al-Kufr. He said that sinfulness, that it is a means to disbelief. So sinfulness can lead us to disbelief. It can lead you. For example, in the example we just uh, mentioned, for example, the person, for example, the Muslims that go to parties. And they go to parties, alcohol is being served, they're mixing, they're dating, they're committing zina, they're doing everything. Music, everything haram is there. For one, they have no jealousy and anger for the religion or the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they're partaking in it. And to, secondly, they're partaking in it. Thirdly, this exhibits the cowardice that Ibn al-Qayyim was mentioning as well, because they've, they've just become accepting it. Fourthly, how this relates to the statement of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala, is that they begin to traverse the path of disbelief. Why? Because they're all indulged in all the things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hates. The more they indulge in that, the more sinfulness, the weaker their iman gets, and the more, the closer they're going to disbelief, because the opposite of iman is disbelief, is kufr. Iman on the right and kufr on the left. So, iman, that strong iman and faith, which will encourage you to detest that, uh, to have anger and and detest the bounds of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala being transgressed, is on the side of iman, and the sign of Dis, the side of disbelief is where you accept that and you actually enjoin the evil and forbid the good. No, brother, don't tell them to put down the music. No, brother, don't say anything to the sisters. It's okay if they're wearing makeup and they have tight dresses or mini skirts and we can dance with them. No, don't say anything. So and so's going in the room with so and so and they're going to do whatever they, they please. It's free. They're, they're free to do whatever they want. That's where it's going to lead to where they believe 
they're going towards disbelief by the sinfulness, and then perhaps they can even fall into disbelief by making the unlawful lawful, istihlal, that they begin to think that the sin they're committing, the sin that their friends are doing, that's okay, we're, we, we're free to do whatever we want. She can have a boyfriend, she can commit zina, it's okay. They say that the unlawful is lawful, that's kufr, that's disbelief, it takes you out of the fold of Islam. Allah declared it haram, the Prophet Wasallam said it was haram, but then you say it's halal, that's a big problem. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from this. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.